All right, let's get into the final portion of this part of the lecture where we'll discuss Bernstein Vazirani algorithm, which you can think of it like a follow up to Deutsch-Schosa. So why did Bernstein and Vazirani, what did they start with? We saw that Deutsch-Schosa proves that the quantum computers can solve a particular problem with certainty, 100% confidence in polynomial time. But uh, classical computers have to take exponential time if they want to solve for all the inputs with certainty. So for some of the inputs with certainty, they need exponential. But probabilistic algorithms are still practical, right? So that uh, in the real world, we are okay with allowing for wrong answers with very small like, negligible probability. So if we allow for negligible probability, the Deutsch-Josa problem can be solved even by classical computers in polynomial time. So if you look at it earlier, we mentioned that the Deutsch-Josa problem uh, to solve with 100% certainty, classical algorithms need to query for half of the inputs plus one points. So at least one point more than half the inputs. But if you're okay with allowing for error with negligible probability, then the classical algorithm is also quite simple. You just query the function on some random set of points. Okay, So if you do that, even for a balanced function, uh, the classical algorithm can solve uh, within polynomial time. So the intuition behind there is just like simple. For a balanced function, we know that half of the inputs output 0 and half of the inputs output 1. So it's like two buckets, bucket of zeros and uh, like bucket of inputs which output 0 and bucket of inputs that output 1. So the intuitive argument here is that if we choose inputs randomly, if we query the oracle on random set of points, the probability of inputs coming from a the same bucket, like let's say bucket 0 or bucket 1, it reduces exponentially as we keep querying. So the motivation of for Bernstein and Vassarani is as follows. They came up with a problem which quantum computers can solve with very high probability in some time, but any classical computer cannot solve with probability greater than half using the same time as a quantum. So, uh, Extending this, this for those who know, this can be thought of as an oracle separation between the complexity classes BQP and BQP. But again, as I said for Deutsch, so if you don't know, all right. So this is the problem statement that Bernstein and Vazirani came up with. Like we had for Deutsch, so we again are given an oracle for a function f, which has which takes in n bits as input and outputs one bit, either zero or one. But the change here is, here the function is of a type a dot x. So earlier in Deutsch-Josa, we were given the guarantee that the function is either a constant function or a, a balanced function. But here, we are again given a guarantee, but of a different form. We are given a guarantee that there exists a value a embedded in f, such that for any input x given to f, the output is a dot x mod 2. That is, it's just a dot product between a and x, okay, uh, in mod 2. So the, the goal for uh, Bernstein Vazirani is to, or the goal for this problem is to output this uh, n bit string a that's embedded in f. So given an oracle access to this f, which has a embedded in it, the goal is to output this n bit string a. Okay, let's see what's the classical solution to solve this problem. It's quite straightforward. Uh, the first solution that you can think of. So the classical oracle, we know that f of x is a dot x mod 2. So simply query the oracle with this sequence of inputs. So the first input that you query is 1 for by all zeros. Uh, the second input is 0, 1 for by all zeros. And then third, you'll have 1 at the third position and then 0 at the other positions. So similarly, you go on. Okay, so you just have to make n queries and for the first query, we'll get the first bit, second query will give the second bit, uh, third query will give the third bit and so on. So after n queries to the classical oracle, 
we can obtain each of the n bits i mean n bits together just to give an example to again reiterate what i mentioned earlier let's just assume that the a that's embedded in it is 1011 let's assume that n is 4 and then a is 1011 so we query the oracle with four inputs or yeah to generalize it uh, we query first with 1000 0100 0010 and 0001 so 1000 dot this will give the first bit one and then 0100 will give the second bit that's zero 0010 will give the third bit that's one and 0001 will give the fourth bit that's one we can also prove that we cannot do any better than these n calls to the oracle for a classical oracle okay so consider that we have a function with that has an a embedded in it and then just writing the previous what i said in the previous layer set of equations uh, we have a1 to a n and let x1 to x n minus 1 be the query okay so x1 can be written as x11 till x1 n and then x n minus 1 can be written as x n minus 1 1 till x n minus 1 n because these are all n bit strings okay so it's like we have this system of n minus one equations with n variables a1 to a n and we know that uh, this is an under, under determined system of equations which means there are less equations than uh, variables and we cannot find a unique solution a for this system of equations so irrespective of what queries that we do to this classical oracle we have to use n queries to this oracle to determine a and as we saw in the previous slide it's also an upper bound so we know uh, an algorithm that after n queries will give the output and here with this slide with the intuition that we provided here we also know that we need at least n queries now let's look at the quantum solution for it i'm just displaying the end-to-end -end quantum solution in a single picture but hey i think you guys remember this diagram right the quantum algorithm to solve the bernstein Vazirani problem is same as the algorithm that same has a set of steps that's used to solve the dyshow sub problem. Given that we have seen these individual steps, I'll just briefly go over these steps in somewhat quickly. So the first step, it involves applying Hadamard to all the inputs. All right, to step back a little bit, the step zero is the input state, which is same as dyshow sub. We have uh, n qubits all zeros and n plus 1 qubit as uh, 1 and then step 1 is applying the Hadamard on all the qubits okay I'm just giving the final expression that we derive uh, Hadamard applied on a uh, random state a it's summation over all x minus 1 to the a dot x x okay so now if you apply Hadamard on this state all 0 it's just 1 over uh, root 2 to the n summation over all possible states x. So that's the output of the first step. And then we apply the oracle. We saw earlier that when we apply the oracle, it's same as having this phase that comes out minus 1 to the f of x. But we know that f of x is a dot x. So x when we apply uh, the state x and minus when you give it to the article the output will be minus 1 to the a dot x x and a minus so again this is focusing on the first n qubits so this is uh, when we apply this is the output of step 1 and when we apply uh, when we pass it to the oracle with the n plus 1th qubit and so the qubit to be minus minus state we will get this output where less summation over x minus 1 to the a dot x x okay the third step is applying the Hadamard or to be more precise Bernstein Vazirani we have to apply the inverse of Hadamard but inverse of Hadamard is Hadamard itself if you look at it this is the this is the state that we have got at the end of step 2 I mean summation over x minus 1 to the a dot x x and interestingly if we apply the Hadamard again or the inverse of Hadamard on this state we'll get back the value that we want which is the value a which is the bit string a that we want right 
I mean, we have to measure it. This is a, uh, the qubit state that we get. And then once we measure it, we'll get the bit string A. Okay. So now let's look into the Qiskit implementation of Bernstein Vazirani. All right. So this is the circuit that we have for Daiso. So I will just make a copy because it's the same circuit, right? So let's call this the PV circuit. All right. So we know that the input is 0, 0, 0, 1. We know that the first step is Hadamard applied on all qubits and then we have to apply the oracle. Let's come back to it a bit later. We know that the third step is applying the Hadamard and finally doing the measurement. Right. Okay. Let's come back to what the oracle is. Okay. Just think about it. What do we want to implement? We want to the oracle to take in x, y and output x and y xor f of x. So essentially we want the oracle to output the we want this final qubit to be xor with f of x and we know that f of x is a dot x. Okay, so what is the implement of implementation of how a dot x? How do we implement a dot x? So, for how do we uh, implement a dot x for a particular a? The answer is quite simple. Uh, if a is one zero zero, then we just do this because what does this do? If we input a y, it just outputs y xr x1. Okay. Or right, okay, here they call it q0, q1, q2. So which means let's say the inputs are x0, x1, x2. So this just implements y xr x1. Okay, which means a is 100, right? It's one dot x0 plus 0 dot x1 plus 0 dot x2. And similarly, if we want to implement 101, it's just this. Because this is y xr x0 xr x2. So this essentially says it's y xr 1 dot x0 plus 0 dot x1 the 0 dot uh, sorry 1 dot x2 okay let's see what the output is if it matches right so the output says it's 101 and 101 so yeah as before we ignored the ancilla qubit uh, the fourth uh, the last qubit so that has 0 with uh, probability 50 and or 50 percent and 1 with probability half so Right, but the first two qubits are 101. Or I think we have to read it from here, it's 101. Let's try to do this. So if I put this here, the output should be 110. Okay. Yes, that's what we got. 110. One, one, okay, and if I delete this, it should be 0, 1, 0. Right, we got 0, and 0, and 0, and 0. So the implementation of Oracle is straightforward. Uh, if for whichever bits A is 1, we have a CNOT with that particular bit as uh, control and the answer, the last qubit as target. Okay. So that's about uh, the implementation of uh, the bernstein vazirani algorithm in Qiskit. I hope you enjoyed this part of the lecture. In the next part, Dheeraj will talk about Grover's algorithm.